I'll tell you what I always forget about on it. Besides the fact that they have Alpha Brain, they got New Mood, they got everything for your digestive health. They got a keto collection. They got uh, things for support and vitality, uh, like krill oil, joint oil, active B complex. Uh, they've got essential nutrients, earth grown nutrients, all kinds of stuff. Vitamin D sp three spray, which is a lot of people are deficient in that I use. Uh, shroom tech support, I swear by. If I'm working out, nothing gives me better energy. It's crazy. I, it actually works. Creatine. They got the best creatine on the market. And by the way, creatine is the one thing that all nutritionists seem to agree is actually good for you. Um, they've got uh, sh shroom tech immune stuff for your immune system. This is all stuff that um, the owners, the founders of the company use themselves. But what I really like and I always forget is they got fitness. They got fitness classes. You can, you can watch stuff online and get a serious hardcore half hour workout. It's unbelievable, man. So on it.com slash fighter for 10% off. It is the best go-to company for any kind of supplements you want. I swear by it. I use it. So does Brendan. So does Joe Rogan. Uh, everybody you know. So uh, I, I, I wish I had my text. I, somebody go, is on it the real deal? I'm thinking about getting some stuff. And I go, <laughs> I use it. And so does everybody who owns the company. We don't go to other companies for our supplements. So yes, the answer is they're outstanding. No, 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 no. I hear you're a fucking good. monster comic. Thanks, man. I've never seen you. you I, that's not true. We could talk about it, though. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> talk about it. I'm with Sam Morell, and I just said to him, I've never seen you do comedy. And you just said, and that's not true. I opened for you years ago at Gotham, and you uh, you went on stage afterwards, you were like, fuck, that guy's really funny. Oh, really? Yeah. And well, then, yeah, I've and heard then, you're a monster. And then you said, uh, and then you go, but I'm funnier, and I got a huge laugh. <laughs> and it made me laugh. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Well, if I told you that, I meant it because usually <laughs> I'll avoid somebody if I. You know. No, you're really nice. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I always get a kick out of people saying you were really nice, because Chris Rock one time I said uh, said something I, I didn't even give a fuck, but I said uh, I followed you last night because we had sort of said I. And he goes, was I, was I nice to you? And I was like, I think so. <laughs> How the fuck wouldn't you be nice? I mean, yeah, you know what I mean. You and now you were a dick. Oh, okay. Yeah, usually people aren't a dick. It's it's like you kind of got to go out of your way. I you think know? so. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Did you shoot a special? I did. Yeah, I self-produced it. I shot it in New York City at the uh, at the Village Underground, which is like around the corner from the Comedy Cellar. Yeah. And uh, shopped it around. No one, no one is interested. So I was. What like, a surprise! <laughs> fucking comedy. So I, uh, I was like, you know what? I'm making it. I just made it myself, and uh, and I was ready to just put it on YouTube myself. But well, that's because you you write a, you write an hour. After a while, you get so fucking sick of it. So you got to get it. rid of it so you can start. I, that's what I say to my agent. I'm like, I don't care that Netflix doesn't want it. I got to get this fucking thing out. Exactly. And, and I kind of was, I was like, yeah, these have a lot of Me Too jokes in it. It has a lot of, I, but I felt timely. topical. So yeah. So I, I was like, I'm, I'm putting it out one way or another. And then I end up kind of striking a deal with Comedy Central's digital channel because they have so many views. But they put my last hour special. I did my last hour special with Comedy Central on TV and no one watches TV. Nobody watches TV. So then I I knew that though going in. So I said, you got to put the whole special on on your website. And they said, okay, but they put an ad every three fucking minutes. What? So who's watching What? That? Yeah. So this they're one so is ad free. Well, that, was, that was my one rule. They're like, so dumb about it. I don't know. Yeah. Comedy Central seems like it's becoming more and more irrelevant. Right? Yeah, well, watch my special on Comedy Central. <laughs> <laughs> what's it called <laughs> it's called i got this i got this yeah what, what's your new one about uh it's just a lot of short jokes and i tell one story at the end which is uh about a vigilante who saved me in cleveland really yeah uh, uh, hilarities I no was shit outside. i was just yeah. there great club yeah what happened uh basically uh it's valentine's day lebron had just left the calf so cleveland was fucking depressed yeah, angry they and they deserve they put everything on lebron that city so yeah but by the way if i'm lebron i'm getting the fuck out of, i yeah. love cleveland i like the people but i'm getting the fuck out of that from even, miami even cleveland <laughs> yes i do you think even <laughs> clevelanders even cleveland the guy goes you like cleveland i go yeah and he goes <laughs> bullshit nobody fucking likes cleveland and walked away from me then i go yeah. where, where do i go they go well there's a market if you just you could go over the like 10 minute uber ride there's a market I yeah went, saw a market and that was it yeah a market or do you want to fuck cuban models for an entire basketball season you're going miami <laughs> you're going to fucking so, miami <laughs> so uh yeah basically I, I met a girl after the show and and she was there with a guy but they weren't dating and we kind of hit it off and he was buying me drinks to keep an eye on me <laughs> so i was like all right whatever I'll, I'll i'll take the free alcohol and then he he left for a second i just asked her do you want to leave and we left 
and we start making out and like on the street then we end up in a bar we're doing shots it's a good we're, night it's yeah, a good it's, night for a comic it's a good night and yeah. then I was a feature too so it was even better even better I was headlining like an off night you're you know? tall and you're funny as shit alright keep going <laughs> so then not a bad uh, looking kid <laughs> thank you yeah Holy kind of a shit. sleepy you look a little bit like a sleepy you look like a thinner um <laughs> Who the fuck? Who the fuck was the uh, quarterback for the Falcons? Uh, oh uh, no, I never get him. I, I would get Flacco for the Ravens. Oh, 100 percent Flacco. Yeah, I would get Flacco. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. bring up Flacco. That's I, some, that's 100%. some people would say Michael Michael Phelps, but not the body. Nah, and I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. I know not Michael the body. Michael Phelps is not a good looking guy. He's got I know, giant gums. No, you're a good looking guy. Thank you. There he is. There's Flacco right there. There you are. That's <laughs> oh, exactly what I meant. <laughs> The he's, fuck? he's got good hair though look at that hair yeah, you have your yeah. hair's all right it's, it's all very right. italian and, and curly yeah. or is it jewish i'm a jew yeah so you're a jew so it's not a, you're, like, you're like a jew who looks a little bit italian but then you look at your hair and you're like well <laughs> i mean uh flacco yeah flacco that's the that's the italian version if, if flacco was a jew he'd be you and that's the italian version. calling right a jew italian is almost a compliment because it just means that we're not neurotic well that the jews we always the jews would always play italians in the mobster movies back in yeah. the day yeah so James Caan played Italian. Was James Caan's Jewish? What's the name? Of, who's the Jew who played the Mexican in The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly? You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, Eli Wallach. Yes. Fucking Eli Amazing. Wallach. Good call on that. <laughs> Eli Wallach. That's right. And he lived to like 99 he, or yes, something? Yes, he did. Yes, he fucking oh, did. I he met was him awesome. once. Did you? Yes, I did. He went to my acting school. Damn. He was a great actor. And he said to me, he goes, do everything. Do it all. I don't give a shit if it's on, you know, the, and he was so good. He goes, I don't care if it's on a cruise ship. I did everything. And that's what I did. That was Damn. my motto. I he, I never forgot that. I never said no to a goddamn thing. I did Damn. it. I did it all. That's yeah. so smart. He was he was phenomenal. He was a great actor. Great in that movie too. Look at him. Back in the day, you get they weren't wearing sunscreen. They were all sweaty. They they were sweaty for fucking real. You know that's what I mean? So, so with the prep for the role, you're just like you're just like just tan a lot. I'm playing the Mexican. That's you know? it. That's exactly right. <laughs> just tan. Yeah. So anyway, I met that girl in in Cleveland. It turns into like a whole thing. Where I'm about to take her back to the hotel, and then the dude who we ditched found us on the street, what? and he was a scary dude, and he was like missing a couple teeth. And I was like, he's gonna fucking. I can't fight, dude. Oh, I just can't no. fight. All you LA comics can fight. All us New York comics are drunks and we're pussies you know what i mean like all you la comics have black belts and shit it's hilarious yeah, like yeah. you're all like i know you're a badass I well know i mean could, I, i'm not a badass but i'll fight I, you, mean, I, I mean in that situation i'm probably gonna be i'll be hopefully better than okay i don't know i mean i'll be i just okay. i, I don't just, know i don't know i just I'm, know I'm, like, I'm gonna fight this guy might have a knife or, i'm like i don't want to yeah, get fucking bad. stabbed or something so i was just like he just got in my face and was like do you want to do you want to go back I, I asked her like what, what do you want to do and he just kind of was like do you want to do you want to fight over and i was like no fight not. over i just yeah. met her i don't yeah. care but in that situation i'd be like no <laughs> i was in i was in dallas and all i was doing was talking to a girl who was talking to me she was talking to me and i was alone i wasn't doing anything and uh she started talking to me and her the boy she was with the guy she was with took her beer out of her hand and smashed it on the ground damn i didn't miss a fucking beat i literally turned i just it went and I just turned and walked the fuck away. I just turned and walked away. I, I disappeared in the crowd. I'm not That's gonna. I'm not gonna fucking fight over any girl. No. I mean that I that I just met or who's talking to me. No, no, no. That's a line I said. Especially in the somebody who's missing teeth. Because he, he was care. missing teeth, and I said I've never fucked someone and been like that was better than teeth. You know, <laughs> that was a line. I said. You know, it's That's exactly uh, right. It's just not. Uh, yeah, I I got. I had a thing in Vermont. This is another story from the special, but it's just uh, you, you made me think of it because of the pint the the beer glass smash and a guy smashed a beer glass over my head in Vermont oh, last Jesus year Christ. I was at Vermont I you, didn't you, do you shit you don't seem like a bad you seem like a very anything. unassuming nice guy I, did, I, I am I did nothing what happened was I wasn't even at the show I was two blocks away having a beer with a friend of mine uh, Carmen Lagala a comic who was opening for me that show and we're in the uh, we're in the bar and this guy just walks up to me and he just kind of started shit and I was just kind of like okay I was ignoring him and something was off about him I could tell and he and he just uh, there were two other comics there and he said uh he said uh you go to he's a university of vermont, vermont. i said no and he goes do you have a master's degree and I, was, I said you're getting colder is what i said to him and he said i'm gonna beat the shit out of all of you and i just like kind of turned away i was like he's not gonna actually hit us i was kind of like he's bluffing i turned away he took a pint glass and just smashed it over my head and i turned around like kind of in shock i was like what do i do <laughs> you know yeah, see, there's there's two other guys here who will fight i know they stood up with for me. me i'm always getting ready for that moment and, and there's comes. no way i would have turned around i would have gotten i would have gotten position 
That this is why I box and do jujitsu at fifty three because I still feel like I got to be ready. You're fifty three. Yeah. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. I know it's ridiculous. You look, <laughs> you look not fifty three. I like hearing that. I'm not a New York fifty three. It's the air. It's the air. But I. If you were, if you, were in, if you lived in Cleveland right now, you'd look like shit. Oh yeah. It's I'd L.A. Be, I'd be hunched over my my. my you know. <laughs> but I also work out like a, I'm a mess. Yeah. I work out. I still train. That, that, that's all. You insecurity. look amazing for fifty three. <laughs> Holy shit. Thank you, sir. That's insane. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> seven years away from 50, 60. Not bad. Not bad. I thank you. Well, the guy anyway. I found out he he's. You know, he's a therapist. The guy who smashed a bottle over I my head. The pack over my head. He's a therapist. He, uh, his wife had just left him. Because oh. I, I was talking to the victims. Adv- I hate that fucking word to the victims. I'm a, vi- a victim. Yeah, but. But uh, the victim's advocate in Vermont. And she called me. And uh, he went for the cop's gun when the cops got him. Oh, no. So that he was oh. hoping the cops would shoot oh, him. he was but trying th- to die. He was trying to die. Oh. But so now it's like a felony, and they, and they were like, "Do you want to come out here?" I was like, "I'm not going to come out there oh, fuck. to deal with this." So yeah, the guy, the guy was having a moment. He was, yeah. he was, he was having a moment of madness. I'm not going to. There's not a shot I get on two planes to go, you know, testify. No. First of I'm all, I good. feel like a pussy. Second of all, <laughs> I'm just not doing it. I turn my back. My bad. That's how I look. I should have turned my back. No, I, I am. Um, I, I. That's literally. I'm always ready for that. I mean, I, I, yeah, I could, it's this. That's amazing though. I get angry though. That's what it is. A guy in, in, um, Edmonton punched me like this and smacked my face, but he he was doing it like he was alphaing me. Oof. He was big and he was with his group and I could tell he was the alpha and he was, he went bop, bop, bop and went like that. And I had been working on, on this Greco move, this great, where you reach up, Daniel Cormier did it to, um to frank mirror and i wanted to know how to do it my friend's a wrestler so i read i got under hooks i grabbed him like this and i i i did this what's called a knee pick i don't even know how to well i just was i practiced it because i'm that much of a fucking idiot and i went i i i yanked i i pulled him down and i and as i let go as he fell i grabbed his ear and i pulled his ear really hard wow and i and he <laughs> fell into the waitress and he got drinks all over and then he said um and he just was so in shock, and then I slapped him. Huh. Like, I got, grabbed him and I slapped him. But I, I did it not in a way where it looked like I was fighting him. I did it in a way where it looked like I was, um, like, it looked like I was doing it back to him, and I was just more, I, I was aggressive. And I think I told, I said something like, I, I said, I think I said something really weird, like, I'm a chimp. <laughs> Because I felt like one. I yeah. felt strong in that moment. I was so angry. You took angry. down a big dude. Well, it wasn't. Yeah, he didn't expect. You know, he was. Yeah. I, 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 you know. But it, it was. If you had seen it, you wouldn't have known what I was quite doing. He just didn't know either. But I slapped him. I went whack, whack, and I was ready to fucking. Yeah, I was so mad, but I was smiling, and I and I think I went ah. I go, I'm a gym, bro. Careful. <laughs> And then I walked away, and then he sent me drinks all night. Oh my god! And I god. said to the waitress, "I go, um, I can't drink. I, I don't. I can't do this. But so fill it with uh, water or iced tea, uh, you know, because he was sending me like he sent me like a brown drink, and I think it was like Jameson's or some shit. And then oh, he sent shit. me vodka or tequila, whatever the fuck it was. But he kept sending it to me, and I kept going, all right, God, <laughs> water." Anyway, it was. I, I, That's I, so weird. I forgot so he, that story. He kind of alphaed you and you alphaed him back, and then he took. You got well, I just bull- got angry, man. But you, I've been you, working on a particular move. <laughs> but you bullied a bully. You bullied a bully, and then he yeah. and then he turned nice. I fucking hate that about people. Yeah, but, but bullies <laughs> make me. He was just being a. Yeah, he was being the alpha guy, and he was a big, good looking guy, so I already hated him for being bigger than me. And uh, it's all insecurity for me. I just can't. I got bullied when I was in eighth grade, right? I should have, I should have smashed a pint glass over the guy's head back and maybe he would have bought me. No, you just night. didn't have my trauma. Like in yeah. eighth grade, I was bullied really, really yeah. badly for a whole year, and uh, so I, we used to live in compounds in Saudi Arabia, and there was a kid who lived in my compound, so there's no escape. You live in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, I lived all over the world. Wow, since I was fourteen, India, Pakistan, Greece, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, and he used to bully me, and I, I was a coward. I, I, I was afraid of him, and I did everything I could to avoid him, but I couldn't. So the humiliation of that when I, when you're a small young boy. When I was the first, and I was doing judo and stuff, but the first thing I did when I went to boarding school was I became a wrestler because I, wa- I I thought I'm gonna get bit really big and muscular. That never happened, but but I became a good wrestler because I was for a high school guy. But I, I was so insecure and I never wanted to feel that way. So the football players never fucked with me because I was a wrestler and they were football players. So I never got fucked with, which was a big deal for me. It really mattered, yeah. and, you know. And and the, but of course, then from there you go on to doing. Uh, I did all the other stuff because I just wanted to keep building an arsenal. 
but that's all because of the trauma I went through in eighth grade. That's Damn. all. It, it's not. It's all. It's probably all comes from an unhealthy place, you know. Yeah, and I but, still haven't lost it because yeah. I, 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 I would hate if somebody did that. I, I know. Uh, well, Brendan's been with me. Brendan's been with me where he, Brendan, Brendan Schaub, who can fucking pull my spine off my head. Yeah. And we were at, we were at a place in the valley, and the guy was. We were talking to these, just, we were just very innocently talking. These girls recognized me and they were talking and stuff. And the dude, the guy comes up and starts like, like we, I, hitting on the girl. And I thought to myself, he doesn't know. He, what if that's my girl? That's, you're dissing me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go into No that. one fucking Brandon Brandon will be now. embarrassed if I even say this. But like, he was like, what are you doing? What are you fucking doing? And I, you know, I was just, yeah, it's more, it's more, it's more a weird and I slit his throat. I killed him. <laughs> you yeah. killed him? I, I killed him. I followed you got to delete this. Dude. I know, dude. No, I won't. I'm proud of it. I, I, I'm a murderer. So that's the bottom line. <laughs> yeah, and he deserved it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I had to kill his friends because they were witnesses. And you're going to have to kill me because you And this is the awkward this part. to me. And this fuck. is the awkward part. I'm Damn sorry. Damn it. Let's finish the podcast. What if I just took a knife out right now and ah, slit my own throat? No, Sam! <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, if I keep talking, it's going to sound like I'm acting like a tough guy and talking about fights, and then I'm going to get roasted. I'm going to be very clear. I'm a I'm pussy a here. Fighter. My stories, so I am lose. I. I lose so am the I. fights. No, no. So am I. I'm not. If you have any doubt about my pussiness, watch, please watch Brendan Schaub and Brian Callen fighting on YouTube, <laughs> and you'll get a sense of what my skill level is. But he's is. a professional. I mean, he's, you know. He's so fucking, he's so strong, but I'm. I'm determined, and I think I can get. I think I can get position on him. <laughs> and I might come in on, in Crocs. And he said he'd put hands on me. He's gonna kill you. I remember. I, uh, I'm gonna. Fuck I, well, you always think you're like more manly. I think some people like think they're like, well, he's a deep voice. That would be cool to like kick his ass. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not strong. The vo the physique doesn't match the voice. But you, you look know? like an. You look athletic. You could be good at basketball. Jiu -jitsu. Ma basketball. Are you good at basketball? I can like hit bank shots. Pretty pretty. Cat. I'm like I'm a good like mid range shooter. I can hit bank shots. I'm like a good. I'd be I'd be like a good like. I, see, the problem is I model my game after like '90s players, but I'm weak. <laughs> So like I grew up on like the '90s Knicks, so I'm like, yeah, I'm like Oak, but I'm a fucking pussy. I can't, you know. So uh, I can hit, I can hit like jump shots pretty consistently, but I can't dribble. I'm slow and I'm weak. I, I just came <laughs> from the set and I had to play basketball all day. I'm not a basketball player. Yeah, and I had to look like one. So my my co-star James LaRuth, who's a great actor, um, and he plays ball, and he was having to teach me. So I would just have to mimic. But I'm fucking sore. I'm gonna be sore tomorrow. It hurts. I was dude. Jumping. I got no vertical. I'm fucking old. I respect basketball <laughs> no players vertical. so much, man. I I respect like anyone who's a pro athlete. I remember I used to have like a, I used to have a sports show on the Knicks Network, and I have I remember this uh, offensive lineman. He's a Pro Bowler, uh, Justin Pugh. On he plays for the Cardinals now, I think. And I said, hey, wouldn't it be funny if for a gag, like I tried to like you're a lineman, so if I tried to like get through you to like sack my uh, oh, you know my head rider. Awesome. And he's like, yeah, let's try it. He just fuck with two fingers throws me oh yeah oh, it was no. the most that's a insane different kind of strength that's the biggest strongest man in the world yeah let me see him and and fast and smart by the way you can't be dumb and be he was dumb. a great he's a great dude too i'm sure such a nice guy yeah and, but but you know it's like i said to goldberg you know you know goldberg the uh the wrestler oh how, as a jew you think i don't know goldberg thank you <laughs> he's the fucking pride <laughs> yeah he the played, pride he played pro football for i think four or seven years or whatever and, yeah and he's so athletic he's a and, and he was he was like hitting the stuntman. He was running through the line of hitting the stuntman at my age. And dude, I, I, and he can fight too. And, and, and like he practices. And I looked at him and I said, look at the size difference. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> look at what a bitch I am. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, um, like I said, I, the idea of fighting you would, because uh, I, I realized what an athlete he was. I goes, the idea of fighting, that would not work well. <laughs> and he looked at me and he's such a nice guy. And he goes, no, 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 no. You, no, you, you would, no, you never want to do that. <laughs> like as in, like I would, I would kill. Look him. at him! Oh he my would, god! He'd pick me up and throw me on my fucking head. That's that's like the Brendan shit. You're not. That's a bear, dude. You he got a bad down. rap in the WCW for a while because uh, Stone Cold was the big name in the WWF, and yeah. he was just another bald jack guy uh, who wore all black. All right. So it was like I was like, oh, this is like another. Except he was he was just a totally different type of fighter. He I was love like, that dude. He's I mean, he's the real deal, man. He's amazing. I mean, when you play pro football for that long, he played it. Uh, I, think, I can't remember where he played. Oklahoma, maybe. Or? Yeah. You don't want to fuck around with that guy. No. 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 I would not fuck with no. with Goldberg. Nose guard. No thanks. <laughs> no, nah, it's okay. 
He does his own stunts. He didn't trust does the stunt he? man. He's like, no, let me do. What this. do you think about like when Tom Cruise is always like, I do all my own stunts, and you're like, dude, take a fucking break. Like, well, I know a couple things about him. One is uh, I've done, I've, I've spent a little time with him and, yeah. and taken his body in. Believe me, like, like I, uh, he, we, we did this reading, and I, I'm that's how I am. I know. I'm ten percent gay, <laughs> and he's walking in front of me, and he's thick. He's fucking thick. Tom Cruise is. Oh, dude, he's five eight, five nine, but he's he's wide. Like his shoulders, he's got traps and he's just he's never stopped working out he's got wide hips and thick legs there he is yeah damn i, I like looking at these is. photos look, look at that oh who, what, what is that photoshop i don't know what that yeah what is this i don't like what that is that's not real no it's not real but he's he's a fucking wide man and he's never stopped working out he's I just see, a fire yeah. hydrant man he was a wrestler too by the way was he yeah isn't he from like syracuse new york or something he, i don't know he, but, but damn he is shredded yeah, that's dude, crazy he's never stopped working out and between takes um artie lang told me that he would uh jump rope he's jumping he's always jumping rope but is he happy <laughs> well he's never made a relationship work yeah i don't know i feel bad because i really think he's a, from what i know about him which is very limited but people i do know have worked with him for a long time he's the nicest man in the world yeah he's the fucking they, i love tom Cruise. I, I just think maybe he's either I, I don't know is he gay is he not is he not is he asexual He's he lives on he's the movie probably, set. He's probably gay, and he's probably it's probably you know. I mean, no one reacts the way he jumped on the couch with Oprah when he found mm -hmm. Katie Holmes. That's like <sighs> I know. What's dude. crazy is he's a good actor, so that wasn't even good acting. No, that was weird. <laughs> it wasn't. That was like a bad performance. But he is probably gay and probably trapped in the Church of Scientology. It's I, it's I, sad. I think that. But he's a great good. actor, man. I love I love him in Magnolia. I love when he does kind of like a serious turn. I love him in he's, all those. He's awesome. I love him in pretty much every movie he's in. I'm a big I, Tom I, I Cruise fan. I fucking do. I'm a huge fan of his. I really am. I think he's, I think he's such a look at look at the fucking body on that motherfucker. <laughs> you know, good luck, good luck being as as excellent as he is. For whatever reason, though, I think he sold all his property and moved down to Clearwater, Florida. Really? Yeah, and he lives on the on the org, or he lives. He bought uh, the top two floors of a building that Scientology, the the church owns. And, God, that's and that's how he lives, though. man. I but, wonder what his relationship. What's the name of the guy who runs Scientology again? David, uh, what's his name? The guy who wrote the book, right? He must be no, so lonely. No, no, that's lonely. another guy. I feel guy. like he must be so lonely. Mm. But so my a friend of mine spent six months with him on a movie. And Mis Miscavige, yeah. Yeah, well, that guy is. Yeah, but they have like a weird thing. I bet. I bet Tom Cruise must fucking hate him. I bet John Travolta must hate him. Nobody, nobody hears from that guy. I, I, he seems like a scary dude, man. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's creepy. Not a, yeah, not a not from what I read. Going clear, and if there's any truth to that <sighs> book, he does not seem like a good guy. Not a good person. Seems like a real fucking sociopath. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. Look at him, man. Looks he like has like robots. a Nazi vibe. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's like there's like a cleanliness yeah. and like like an a, an order to which he has that reminds me of like a Nazi. Well, in the he's a short guy, and apparently he's suffered from asthma as a kid, and uh, was very muscular, like looked like lou ferrigno or something when he was younger but he's Damn. got he's, he's he's a big smoker i guess i don't know is he yeah he looks like he'd also be like a game show host too <laughs> yeah man i don't know he he doesn't he's not he's not painted in a good light but he's also he just dis, he's not around he just disappears yeah the dudes in the shadows are the scary ones yeah. and he, he's absolutely a shadow but the church of scientology has been exposed by the internet and the the, the problem is that it was really, really exposed, you know, and so their their membership is way down, and they they're not able to do that anymore. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know, man. Although every every religion's got its problem, I guess, but uh, but yeah, they seem extra creepy. The way they like follow you and shit. I'll say this about Jews: we don't recruit the way Scientology does, no. and uh, you no. know. No. Yeah. His dad, his own dad, went bad on him though. Did he? Scavage, yeah, on Rogan. So I don't know, man. The whole thing is fucking strange. The way they, the what they did with Tom Cruise and because Nicole Kidman's father was a psychologist, right? Yeah. So I think that's kind of what was the term that that they use? It's like toxic people or something. No, it's called a uh, uh, potential trouble source. Right. Okay. So PTS. Um, I, I, I was in an acting class with a lot of Scientologists. Really? Yes. And my acting class is written up in the book Going Clear. So, you know, I mean, I, my teacher, Milton Gonzalez, who then left the church, and then oh, I couldn't understand where all the fucking actors went. Yeah. All the people from the church left, and I was like, what's going on here? The whole thing was really weird. I, I can't be around it. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, some of the stuff made sense. Some of the stuff was about, you know, taking personal responsibility for yourself, and 
And I got to say, I, I've been to the Church of Scientology because I did uh, I did Kirstie Alley's show, Fat Actress. So she hired nothing but Scientologists. And we shot there. We stayed there. You know, and and then I did a benefit for nine eleven. When they when they the mic you up for Chrissy Alley's show, they're like, "Tell us some of your secrets too while you're at it." And you're yeah. like, "Why would I?" And they're like, "Oh, you're." Yeah, yeah. Well, no, she was awesome. I love Chrissy. Is she cool? I fucking love her. She's great. She's a great person. And yeah. I and I have to say that I every Scientologist I met, I liked. They were all nice people. Um, I don't know. I never had any issue with them. I mean, yeah. I even made a joke. I was like. Uh, I was at the, at the church and I said, I was, I, they asked me to do this benefit. You guys asked me to do this benefit. And I told my friends and they were like, be careful. And I was like, well, what are they going to do? Tie me to a chair and make me take responsibility for myself? <laughs> and they were all like, ah, yay. And I was like, all right, take it easy. <laughs> so I don't know. So I went to my boy, uh, Yosef Azim's um, wedding and I uh, went to Black Tux and I got fitted for a tuxedo. And I got to be honest with you, I was looking dang good. Um, and in fact, I think the whole wedding did it and they all looked great. Comes in a box. It, I basically went to a black tux studio, got measured, and then they sent it to me. And what happens is if it doesn't work, you can, you can bring it back to the studio and they'll redo it for you right there. Studio, the fitting room, whatever it's called. Showrooms. Yeah. The showroom. Um, it's basically a really easy online ordering process also that brings your suit or tuxedo straight to you. You just pick a style at the black tux.com. Uh, website you requ request a free home try on so you can feel the fit and quality before you commit and if online isn't your style the black tux has these showrooms that's what i did um but from there they'll ship your order two weeks before your wedding so you can check it one last time and make sure you check it but you know they, when you when you get a suit or a tuxedo that is fitted to your body it looks so much better like so much better um, and I know this from experience. So, and I had a very good experience with them. So try it. If you want your wedding to be remembered for the right reasons, order your suit or tuxedo at blacktux.com, the, the black tux, the black tux.com and enjoy 10% off with code T fat K. That's the black tux.com and tux is spelled T U X. Um, for 10% off your pur purchase, put in the code T fat K. Well, I am a, customer of hymns uh the reason my hair is so plush and beautiful is i get my finasteride from them they send it to me i i basically i'll tell you i'm just gonna tell you my experience i was like let me check out this for hymns.com thing because i was spending a fortune on my other my hair pills by a by a uh, a pharmaceutical name and so they sell the generic the same exact thing in generic form at, at a fraction of the cost so i was like let me try this out and what I did was I basically took a picture of my hair, sent it to a real doctor, and he basically said, all right, you're approved. And, you know, a couple of short questions. I filled out a questionnaire. And now I get my pills in the mail. I never have to think about it. And uh, so it's, it's pretty awesome. Now, you can do the same thing with erectile dysfunction. If you're not blessed with a rock-hard dong like myself, uh, you might need a little help. And that there's no shame in that, man. I think like something like 35% of men under 40 suffer from erectile dysfunction and something. Now, the thing about 4 hymns is this is all science-based. None of this is snake oil. None of this is gas station counter supplements. This is all prescription solutions backed by science. It's the same exact medicine you'd get if you went to a doctor because there are doctors that have to approve this thing. They connect you to real doctors online, save you hours. You don't have to go into a, a, a doctor's office. So as a, as a customer, 4 slash F-A-T-K. That's 4 slash F-A-T-K. Uh, it's, it's a great company. Um, prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed. Three-month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Dive into 2020 hair first right now. My listeners can get started with their first month free. Go to 4 slash F-A-T-K. Fat K. Yeah. So what are you doing in LA? I'm just trying to do some shows like this to get people to watch my special you know? oh okay <laughs> you know watch sam or special but are you, do you do any acting uh not really i was in joker like you were you were yeah i was a comic who went on uh who was on stage before uh arthur oh my god yeah so yeah. They, they did, did you did he say anything to you yeah i talked to him i oh, talked to him for a bit yeah 
Really? Yeah, he was really nice. Really? Yeah. Man, I spent five days with him, and he never even looked really? in my direction. Really? I mean, he was just in character. I don't blame him. I mean, yeah. I, whatever he did, he was great. He he uh, he texts me all the time. We're cool now. <laughs> no, I, but we talked for a little bit. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. About what? Stand up. Well, I did I did a different joke every take on oh, the wow. Joker. So I did like it's funny. I was shooting it with Chris Red from SNL. Yeah. You know, and he's the host. So every every take, I get to do a new bit for extras, and I would just keep. I wanted to get a real laugh, so I would yeah. tell new jokes to really hit. Right. And then after every take, Chris would go one more time for Sam Morell, and he'd be like, "I fucking hate you so much." You get to like show off and just do material, and I have to just say a scripted line. One more time. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. So and then he introduces, but then I thought, well, I'm gonna get cut out. Why would I be in this? And he's in it, you know. Right. So no matter what, because he has to bring up the uh, Joker, you know. So uh she then at the end of it joaquin phoenix talked to me a little bit and was really cool and he was just like hey man i was gonna talk to him he goes hey man i like your jokes oh, <laughs> i was so like oh sweet. shit yeah he was really cool i've heard he's very sweet very strange. so nice very such strange. a nice guy you know i don't know the vegan thing and the the speeches are a little bit yeah when he said in the speech he's like we need to like something about cows we're not respecting cows i'm like dude hollywood like just started respecting women like three months ago. Yeah, you know, I mean, like Hollywood's hilarious. baby steps. Hollywood's, you know. Yeah, just, they, I love the country. The, this country really doesn't listen to Hollywood to their credit. Yeah, like when actors talk, most most of Hollywood, like I'm a fan, but shut the fuck. When up. actors talk, you realize that they're fucking actors. That's so and they're true. nothing without writing. God. You know what I mean? Whenever actors talk, I'm just like, <laughs> oh, you can't play a person. You Dude, can only play another person. You can't play you. It's a very strange and peculiar skill set. Yeah. I've met some <laughs> wonderful people in the business who are actors, you know. Yeah. But the, yeah, a lot of them the tend to be a lot of them tend to be uh because it's a very peculiar skill set, it requires it's requires a very narrow kind of well, it, t it requires actually a very broad understanding of human emotion, human behavior. Yeah. There's no, I don't want to diss any, like Al Pacino, these people are amazing. But I don't think it, it, it's, you could become very, very good and famous and also stay very ignorant about a lot of things. That's probably the yeah. best way to do it. Whereas in other, you can't do that really as a comic or a writer. You, you just, you have to deal with people. You know, when you're an actor and- you, You're when very you, sheltered. Well, yeah, because when you're an actor and your life has been on a set- you are treated like a king. You yeah. aren't really spoken to. You're always on set. And if you started when you were young, like a guy like Joaquin, and you haven't stopped working, you do not, you do, you just aren't exposed to shit that we've been exposed to. And also the bar is so high. Like you see someone like Brad Pitt in a movie. He's so good in a movie. He yeah. always plays a cool character, a badass. And then you see him make a cheesy joke at the Oscars when he gets to the speech and you're like, yeah, people would laugh at that. Your friends laugh at that because your friends all kiss your ass. But when you tell that joke in a room full of people, there's no fucking fake in it. That's right. And you by know? the way, they know that. I, I mean, actors know that when they're in but the But if they know, you a, ask someone to punch your one line up. I'm going to say Give this. me a better line. I'll say this. And I, I have a witness to this, which is John Leguizamo. I'm yeah. with John Leguizamo and Sean Penn comes up and starts talking to us. I, I swear to God, I didn't. No, it was Sean Penn. I thought it was an older guy who looked like Sean Penn. Yeah. <laughs> All due respect, because I love Sean Penn. But it's Sean Penn. I swear to God, that's how I felt. He just, he, I, he was having a, I don't know, he was very, very thin. That's yeah. How, and he's just older, you know, people. Right after he shot milk. Yeah, whatever the fuck it was. And uh, he seemed to have a limp. He was walking. There was something going on. It looked like he had a stiff back. I, yeah. I love the guy. I'm not dissing him. I, I'm a huge fan. But I, I, I th this is so lame that I even say it. But. He said, Brian, Brian, Brian's a, a comic. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. And I was like, Is he, and that's cool. I was like, I hope, I hope he's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm old, too old to be thrilled by that, but I was. Yeah, it's you cool. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. I'm too old to be thrilled, but it's kind of cool when someone you grew up watching <laughs> maybe knows a little bit about you. And that's so pathetic to even admit. But, you know, I, I was like, ah. Oh, Thanks. Because because it's part of why we do this is we're still insecure. Yeah, but but the other hundred percent were, and I hope I and, always and hold on to my validated. insecurity. I hope I always hold on to the fact that I don't like myself that much because yeah. I'll lose my funny. But it was also cool because I think actors know that they can't do what we do. Do you think that you would lose your funny if you if you had a higher self esteem? I mean, I I I, I think I have come to a point where I do like myself now. I stopped beating myself up. But I wonder if I would have been as desperate to be heard, as desperate to be significant 
if I really was, if I liked myself and I was, <laughs> I was at, I had peace of mind. I was at ease. I don't know one fucking comic worth their salt who feels that way about themselves. Yeah. Not a fucking comic. And that's why I like fucking comics. <laughs> you I know, think it's well, true. Are you happy with yourself? It's a struggle, I think. You know, I've been in therapy for a long time. I, I haven't been in it for a little while right now, but I, I haven't been. It's. Yeah. I think that's a for whatever reason, like New York comics, like we're all in therapy, man. Like yeah. there's so much. It's the Woody Allen thing. It is. It well, is. What, what did you? What have you gleaned from therapy? I fucked my uh, adopted Asian stepdaughter, and no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you said Woody on, Allen. Let me I don't get my know. hand down my pants. <laughs> um, what I I think you know. He's, have you figured? Did you have any like aha moments about? Sure. Yeah. I, you know, I had a tough relationship with my biological father, and I think it helped a lot. Like, and it showed how selfish he was, and it, and it helped me avoid. You know, maybe uh, <laughs> going down a similar path. You know? Yeah. Dove Davidoff was in therapy. You know Dove. Sure, he's, I love Dove. That's like my best friend. He's hilarious. Like, that's one of my favorite people on the planet. He had a recent Fallon set that was so funny, man. We <sighs> talked about, and maybe it wasn't that reason, but he talked about uh, his couple's uh, therapy. Th therapy was so he's good. He's fucking a monster. It was a one great, of my favorite comics of all time. Cool guy, too. And he said to me, he goes, yeah, I went to therapy, and I figured some stuff out of what? He goes, well, you know, I mean, the, the therapist, after a while, looked at me and said, do you, do you feel like you have a right to exist? <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, and I was like, I mean, not really. I guess when push comes to shove, no. You know, I was like, well, uh, that's a fucking breakthrough right there. <laughs> that's rough. I mean, he he was serious. My know? therapist, I used to do a joke with my, my, my therapist. We're talking about relationships. He said, you tend to pursue damaged people and then try to help them. And I oh, said, dear, uh, you I'm too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you too that's a you, great answer we uh no i i'm definitely i definitely was in it for a long time i saw a, a lot of different therapists and it was, it was it was helpful for me but yeah i mean a lot of time you just don't <laughs> you just don't feel good when you leave i don't yeah i stopped going yeah i, I just didn't find it helpful I really, I'm pretty, I'm, you know, the other, I'm, I'm going to say this though, I'm a really happy person. Yeah. I'm not You have dark. a good energy. You're easy to talk yeah. to. Yeah. My ex said, told me I was dark, but I don't think so. I, I, I feel so lucky and I always feel happy. And I think that's because I have, my serotonin levels are just naturally at an eight. You exercise a lot. That probably I helps. exercise like a fucking animal. Yeah. I never miss a fucking day. Really? No. I'm I got to show you what that. I'm working with later. <laughs> I want to see. You're going to take me in with your hands. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can take <laughs> you, can, you can take me in with your hands. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to feel that bear hug move you did on the guy oh, who knocked on the I'll waitress. I want to see gay it. Out too. <laughs> yeah, I moved this way, and then he, as he put his weight there, I, I knee picked him. I just, I don't know if I did it right. I just think like maintenance on your like mental and then physical or so like especially what we do, man. We travel we're on the road all the time, and like my body, oh, I have, I, I have back problems all the time, so I just. I always am trying to do stuff. I can solve your back problems with fucking exercises. And if you think really? I'm kidding, I'll solve your back I'll solve your back problems. I'm gonna problems. take you up on that. Today. Today, today really? I'm gonna do it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> what do you do for your back? Well, first of all, what do you fucking do so I can um, revolutionize you physically? <laughs> what do I do? I don't do much, man. Exactly. I uh, I take muscle relaxers every that once in a while. That's a terrible idea. I um I drink alcohol after I take well, the muscle this relaxers. Is all, this is all very New York <laughs> I, Jewish. I um <laughs> what do I do? No, I do. I I fly. I mean, you know how it goes. We fly a lot. It hurts, man. Yeah. Just it, it's it's rough. So well, you gotta this. You gotta build the muscles. People think you gotta stretch. You gotta build the stabilizer muscles around yeah. your body. I I never knew this until I became a freak. I even follow web uh instagram like squat university a phenomenal <laughs> me too for different reasons yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for different reasons <laughs> and then like dr simpanelli and i got all these therapists physical therapists that i follow and they it's an it's it's amazing yeah. i do the exercises and and mm, pain free <laughs> you believe it or not a lot of your back problems start in your your glutes your ass oh, i believe it yeah we're gonna work your ass dude. <laughs> yeah dude yeah i'm gay <laughs> <laughs> um what else uh what what so you're a sports fan i'm a big knicks fan i love the knicks i'm a big basketball fan uh i like all sports i saw isaiah fans. thomas the other day really yeah at a party yeah he walked by me and i went he crippled went. my knicks for about five years <laughs> i know he did he fucked us so people hard got so mad but he I was still a great was, player I, I mean he's one of the best ever he's like he's like a little taller than me maybe yeah. i was like great athlete coming through great athlete coming through he goes nah not me i go yeah you yeah, like a dude, one percenter. One of the best. I mean, he also 
You know what's crazy? You know the story about him not being on the dream team, right? No. This is fucking... First off, MJ hated him. Michael Jordan fucking hated really? him. Really? Why? Because the bad boy Pistons were so dirty. And then, so they were so dirty. They weren't like just Bill Lambeer and shit. I had Bill Lambeer on my sports show once. Dirtiest motherfucker ever. Like Larry Bird won't talk to him to this day. I kind really? of... Res I respect how crazy he is, but I'm like, I want no part of you, dude. So MJ hated them. Bird hated them. And then... Cause uh, why? Because they just... They fouled. It wasn't basketball. It was so, I mean, they were incredible and Lambeer was a skilled player, but they would just try to injure you. They were so dirty. Jesus. And Jordan then finally came back the year he overcame the Pistons was the year he kind of became MJ. Beats the Pistons in the playoffs and they all walked off the floor and wouldn't shake his hand. They were bad sports too. So one of the things, wow. one of the big moments with Isaiah is, so this is kind of cool that Isaiah did, but also fucked up. When, you know, Dennis Rodman was on the Pistons, he was kind of nuts and... He's still, he's still nuts. He's in fucking North I Korea. I think that's when he lost his son or something, <laughs> or it's like a custody, custody of his son or something well, happened. Well, another thing was, you know, Isaiah, um, after they got eliminated by the Celtics, Rodman said that people only talk about Larry Bird because he's white and he's not that good. And Isaiah heard that and was like, he said that? And he goes, yeah, he's right. I don't think he believed it, Isaiah. It's I think the dumbest thing I've ever he heard. Knew, he knew that Larry Bird was great, but he yeah. but he sided with his teammate and that's when the Pistons came together. So it was like fucked up he did oh. that. But it's kind of like, I got your back for anything. Who said that about uh, Bird? Rodman. Wow, it's hilarious. So then, so then MJ hated him. I think Bird hated him. And then Magic had, they were, they're, cool now but they had a falling out so they want i don't think anyone wanted and mj wouldn't play on the dream team if isaiah did so isaiah should have been on the dream team and he wasn't i think it fucked with him like till this Damn. day it's dark man because um Artie lang said to describe michael jordan the best way i've ever heard anybody describe a person yeah because uh, for his will will to win and his competitiveness Artie lang said if michael jordan had been on the titanic it wouldn't have sunk. <laughs> he would have so been plugging good. fucking holes. Like, Artie Lang's the best. Oh, he's, he's I great. heard Chris Rock once say about Steph Curry. There's one of the best ones I heard. He goes, Steph Curry is Allen Iverson with two parents. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Holy shit. I lost That's it. That's amazing. Such a good line. It's a great line and it's so true. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that Curry is the greatest three-point shooter of all time. It's insane. Yeah. You know, probably maybe not like stand still, but like off the dribble. I don't even think it's a question. It's so crazy. He can create his own. No one could do that back in the day. How tall is he? 6'4? Six, 6'3 six, maybe. He always looks smaller. Kind of jack now. He's so well behaved. He's so like good in every um Yeah. Well, his dad was wasn't his dad a coach? His dad played for the Hornets. He was a great shooter too, Del Curry. Um and his dad, I mean, you hear those stories, man. You hear those stories about like athletes. He grew dads. up with perfect fundamentals. That's what it was. Absolutely. Yeah, was like, Here you go. His brother's a good player too, Seth. He's not a star like Steph is, but he's like a he's a solid NBA shooter. Well, you know? So anybody who makes it to the NBA, you know what I mean? Yeah, anybody dude. who makes it to the NBA. I mean, look, he played at Duke. I mean, these guys could ball. Yeah, yeah it's a big deal. Um, and and he really, um, yeah, Se Steph Curry's a, a beast. He's. It's like he was so loved, and then the Warriors kind of became too good. But that's not his fucking fault. They got KD. He doesn't get yeah. laid, right? With blue eyes like that, he doesn't get laid. He's, ma like he's, him, ma or? he's married. I think Ward in the street is he probably cheats. I think they all probably do. But uh, no, why would you? Young guys with millions of dollars <laughs> like that, look like that. Girls, <laughs> girls aren't throwing themselves at. He's not. His Instagrams aren't, aren't DMs aren't getting fucking. Lit he up. throws a lot of pictures up with his wife, which is a red flag to me. I think when pro athletes are like, "This is how much I love my wife," I'm like, "Yeah, but how about?" It's like. <laughs> yeah, I don't. That's know. like me. That's like me posting a look, picture with some, like some salad. guys can do it. I mean, yeah. But, but when you look like that, you're a young man. And see, I've seen the kind of women that that are available to those guys. Yeah. And it's well until you've walked in a man's shoes in a, in that man's yeah. shoes. Hold your fucking judgments. Just every. I'm just saying because it's it's so weird what happens to guys like that. She's a fucking beauty look yeah. maybe he loves her maybe i, hope I think he, he does love her i, I hope I'm he's sure. good i hope you know but uh, the point is i don't know man that Steph guy that guy can get he can get me and i'm straight <laughs> you'd, you'd let him fuck you I, i'd make out with him probably if i was drunk I mean, he'd yeah. fuck you he'd probably fuck you so he'd fuck you and he'd pull out from outside and then shoot from you from like 30 <laughs> feet away how do you know <laughs> just, just, to, just to hit he'd shoot a load on you from 30 is, feet away that's, accurate that's how accurate he is right yeah. in the fucking eye in the left eye <laughs> You just call it left eye. <laughs> we shouldn't be talking about Steph Curry this way. He's too much of a class act. He's a class act. And I, I I will say I respect him a ton. I respect all the Warriors, man. Clay, Steph, 
Steve Kerr's an awesome coach. Draymond, they're they're fuck. And you know what? They 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 piss me off so much because they're so good. And right now they're the worst team in the league because Steph's injured, Clay's injured. So they're going to get a sick draft pick and they're going to come back better than ever next year and it fucking infuriates me. Look at me. LeBron though. <laughs> Look at LeBron. He looks like a velociraptor. He yeah, looks dude. like <laughs> Steph Curry's chocolate avatar. He, he, <laughs> how do you how do you fucking guard that guy? You can't. You can't guard LeBron. He's 35 and he's still top 3. 35 still top 3. 35 I think so. years old. I think he, he is. He's every bit of 260. Yeah. I, I sat next to Carlos Boozer on the plane. Carlos said, we're the same size. You don't understand. He's just th much faster than and stronger than all of us. Yeah, dude. And Carlos Boozer is a fucking house. He's a house. You, know, you look at him and you're like, oh, well, that's why. Oh, you're a pro athlete. I'm an actor. Yeah, I'm dude. a piece of shit. And you're that. He was born 6'8". It's not our fault. I suck, though. <laughs> I mean, I suck. He's, he's you know, I want to look like that. <laughs> yeah, Boozer's a big. He is fucking. Jeez, look at those arms. He is a He's big man. Two sixty. Yeah, dude. stylish. I love the. I love the NBA so much. It's it's such a great time for the NBA right now. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. You know. Yep. He did tell me that Boozer told me that Kobe was um, very hard to get close to. Absolutely. Like he and 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 I've heard that from other players. I'm, I don't mean to out Boozer, but. You know, he said Kobe was a guy who would never go out with them. Like he, he just and I and I said I was like that guy was so singular. He wasn't interested in people. He was interested in being great. I'm sure he loved his family. It's such a tragedy. But that was what was great about Kobe is that he, he was the dude that he made everyone else better. Like he, his greatness rubbed off on others. Like on Team USA. But, but, but the same way Jordan did, or or a little less. I think he was the Jordan of that generation. I think no one will be Jordan because Jordan was Jordan. But but Co and no one will be as good as Jordan really. Some will say LeBron is better because he's a better passer and he's bigger. But you know, Kobe had Jordan's will on his heart. I think. And on Team USA, he it was he had a young LeBron, a young Dwayne Wade, a young Carmelo, and they all had their best year right after playing on Team USA with Kobe because they saw his habits and like. They'd be like, oh, we're going to go out. And he'd be like, I'm not going out. I'm, I'm waking up at 5 a.m. to fucking shoot and work out. Do, do you know what I what I was reminded of when it came to Kobe? Because I'm not a basketball fan. I don't know a lot about this stuff. But Kobe was always a guy I saw hitting the three points or whatever it had to be, right? But I didn't realize that he also won the slam dunk contest. As a rookie. Which I, uh, so I was like, oh, you also can do that. But you didn't even do that in your in your career. He's primarily a shooter. Right. I mean, he was a scorer. He, he was did like, whatever he had to he, do. Yeah, he was like a, a will to win scorer. I mean, he. But Carlos said to me, I think it was him who said he would. He tried to wake up early, earlier than Kobe, and beat him at you know, like, and Kobe would always be there before him, five thirty in the morning. Mamba understand. mentality. That I mean, Kobe. I, I as a basketball fan, like, I feel like Kobe was almost like the Ric Flair of the NBA, where you just couldn't. He was like a heel for so long. I feel like even if you hated him, you loved him. You love to hate him, yeah. Because well, he was. I had most of my friends didn't were Knicks fans in New York, and they just hated him. But they would always be like, "You just can't argue with the guy." You, my 81 friend, eighty-one points in a game. My friend Stavros always said you couldn't ignore him. I mean, that's that's yeah. just the truth. I mean, he he was he was the toughest cover in the NBA, and he was just so fucking good. And then he kind of it's cool to watch it. He was such a ruthless competitor in his prime, and then at the end of his career, he became kind of a, a mentor to so many young guys so you see like the instagrams of these players who were like that was like my my guy like everyone felt they had a connection to well him. he fucked jeremy lynn up he's like i don't want to play on the same court as him yeah he, he was like he was calling his teammates going i don't want that dude on the team yeah and he's like i'm not playing on the court with him and and, and jeremy lynn was like it's like he was looking up to him and jeremy lynn, fuck jeremy lynn up i've, I've heard i love stories. jeremy lynn dude yeah. he uh he'd come to the Is cellar he still playing? he's playing for the beijing ducks right now he um mm. Jeremy Lin's a cool dude. I, he'd come to the cellar. He was a really nice guy always. And uh, he hooked me up with tickets to games and stuff. He was so nice. And I think he noticed when he played for the Nets, I'd only hit him up for Knicks Nets tickets. And he'd be like, he only hit me up twice a year, <laughs> you know? But uh, but he was really good, right? Dude, when he, I remember, he's such a classy guy. I remember the night when Lin Sanity was going down, which is like the best moment of my last 20 years as a Knicks fan. He just went off on, the Lakers, he dropped 38. So Kobe, before the game, said, I don't know who he is. And I don't know if it was on purpose to fuck with him. But after the game, they asked Jeremy Lin, like, do you think he knows who you are now? And he goes, you'll have to ask him. Like, he's very classy always. Yeah. But I, that was the night that Whitney Houston died. I remember that. Because I remember someone tweeted. How long did they play together? 
they only played together a season, I think. Yeah. But I remember that it was the night Whitney Houston died, and someone tweeted, "Holy shit, Whitney Houston's dead. That's Lynn Sane." Oh, <laughs> so I remember that night because wow. it was like the night. But uh, how tall is he, Jeremy Lin? He's like six four. Yeah. But uh, dude, he got Jeremy Lin's cool because he got like slept on. You know, he just got like profiled as an a six three. I'm a, but he was like an Asian dude, so, so he would fuck dudes up in college as a Harvard player. You know, he played at Harvard because he didn't wow. get any D one offers. Wow. So then he'd fuck up UConn and like Kemba Walker and like great players, and they'd be like, "Ah, it's a fluke because he's Asian." Like they legit were the scouts were legit racist. Yeah, sure. It's insane. Well, you just you just it, you have to as an Asian player, there are a great deal of assumptions you have to come get over. There's never like, been a guy I started who looks talking. Like I started him. talking about being a black man. And I was like, I don't, you know, I was like, I don't think things are as prejudiced. And a black dude um, who listens to the podcast said, hey, dude, let, let me tell you something. I have my PhD, or he's like doctor, and he goes, it's not like that. What it is is when I walk into a room, I have to overcome a bunch of assumptions that are mm. made about me. And, and until you've lived that, it's way too subtle to explain. But it does take a lot of effort. It does... It is very difficult not to have a little bit of a chip on your shoulder. Yeah, you know. So th those are the things that, as a as a white landowner, I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> he really, um, he really, though. Yeah, he Lynn had an awesome run. So he, I mean, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of his forever. You know. Yeah. Um, let's do some current events, man. Current events. Okay. Well, so <laughs> uh, let me see if I have my Raycons. I don't, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say it out loud. I was sent these Raycons, and uh, I don't use my AirPods anymore. I use my Raycons. A couple of reasons. One, they stay in my ears. Two, I think the sound is better. I couldn't be happier with them. Three, I think the battery lasts longer. So I'm a fan of Raycons. Um, I don't know Ray J. I don't know much about it, but I, I'm a fan. I think they're excellent. Um, the E25 is what I have. That's their best one yet with six hours of playtime. Six hours. Seamless Bluetooth pairing. I, I, I pair it with my iPhone. <clears throat> more bass, a more compact design. It gives you a nice noise isolating fit. It's pretty awesome. I use them when I work out. I use them when I'm just walking around. I, they're my go to. They're my go to. So, you know, I don't know. Apple's got some cashing up to do, uh, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> and all earbuds, are, uh, Raycon earbuds are also stylish and discreet. They, they, there's no dangling wires or stems. They just look, they just fit in your ear perfectly. Um, so it was founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Cardi B, whatever, but I don't really care about any of that. I think that's a really good product. So now it's time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon, R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash T-Fat-K. Buyraycon.com slash T-Fat-K. And you'll get 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. I own them. I use them. They're awesome. Guys. Sometimes you need a bar, okay? And you want that bar to be keto-friendly, and you want that bar to be plant-based, and you want that bar to be delicious, okay? Anybody like chocolate chip cookie dough? Because if you don't, you're probably not an American, or you've never had it, all right? Either way, Key Eats bars are keto-friendly. They're seriously delicious. They're made with whole ingredients like almonds. Um, they've got all kinds of flavors, so give it a shot. Everybody I know, of, I've actually have not yet tried one, but everybody I know who has speaks of them uh, with glowing reviews. I'm going to eat some so that I can tell you exactly how I feel, but my feeling is after talking to three people who've eaten them, uh, they think they're unbelievable. They're sweetened, I guess, with this FDA-approved keto sugar called allulose, so they they taste like they're really sweet, but it's but it's keto, and it's not the kind of sugar that spikes your blood level and all that. So keyeats.com slash fighter. Try keyeats bars for free, three bars for free, and with free shipping. Do it! All right. So it is currently Black History Month, and there is a man in Iowa who was recently arrested because he kidnapped a woman who multiple media sites would not classify what race she was in but it's assumed that she's a white lady mm -hmm. so this guy kidnapped her for nine hours forced her to watch the roots to make sure that she understood racism better and then it's not explained how she escaped or if she was let go she should she should force him to watch misery to understand kidnapping <laughs> <laughs> like, holy shit yeah he's Man a charged with kidnapping woman forcing her to watch roots mm -hmm. to understand her racism damn what 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 did she do that made her he, he he's trying to convert somebody. 
He just kidnapped a random woman (laughs) and he made her sit down and watch the entire miniseries with her with him for nine hours and every time she would kind of fidget in her seat and try to get up he said that he would then scatter her body parts in chicago on a like a very popular highway and so she was basically intimidated to sit down and just watch this entire miniseries and she eventually was released and she that yeah she uh fortunately like nothing happened to her she ended up reporting it to the police and they found they found him, but they're still so confused why hmm. he decided the just most to bizarre make her watch shit. The Well, route. he's obviously crazy. Obviously. But that is the most bizarre shit I've ever heard in my life. That's crazy. <laughs> that is, shit. you know. So ma- they don't, so is he arrested? We don't know. First, ra- First degree arrest. He's wearing an orange False suit. Person. He's probably arrested, right? That's he's not, laughing yeah. in the picture. He did laughing. get arrested. We are That's waiting crazy. for him to get charged. He's out of his mind. Out of his mind. You never think that that's going to happen to you. You're going to be forced to watch Roots. He's, he's, la- <laughs> he's laughing because he's watching different strokes in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that um, these Navy SEALs, their instructor, they were all freezing on a rock. I don't know if this is true. They were freezing on a rock. And uh, and he goes, the first one to get a heart on. Uh, if, if one of you guys can get a heart on, you can come back in. But if not, you're sitting out on this fucking water. And everybody's like totally frozen. So they're all trying to get, like, try like, somebody <laughs> fucking get hard so they can go back in and get warm. Because he was trying to fuck with their minds. I'm like, that's nuts. What? Damn. That's so random, <laughs> too. Ice cold. So that's kind of like that. Watch <laughs> yeah, Roots and much. fucking cry. Mm-hmm. Be moved by it and stop being racist. Yeah. How long is Roots? How many episodes is Roots? It's a mini series, So I'm guessing anywhere. So I'd say like nine. Nine? nine. Yeah. yeah. Right. An hour each. That's a long. That's that's a while. And yeah. it's assumed that he made that uh, that woman watch the 1970s version, not the more recent one. I remember seeing if it. That counts for anything. I remember seeing it as a kid. It moved the shit out of me. I was just like, I remember saying to my grandpa, "Why? Why would they do that? Why would they do that to those people?" If I was that woman, I was kidnapped. I'd be like, "Can we watch the Green Book? I want like a white racism movie. Can we just?" <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good series. Or at least it. Well, you know, I remember it being so. All right. Next one. Okay, uh, have you guys seen this clip going around Twitter? Oh, yeah, let me pause this real quick. Um, so this one, you guys have seen this by you now. You guys probably oh, have yeah. seen this. It's the guy who I'm keeps sorry. on punching the back of uh, a yeah. woman's seat. Yeah. See what's going on here, Brian? This guy's on the, the seat where that does not recline near the back, and then she's reclining into him, and now she, he's punching her seat. Like, you know, it's rude to recline into me when I can't recline. But, when I can't recline back myself. So a lot of people are divided. Some people think he's an asshole for punching her seat, and some people uh-huh. think that she's an asshole for reclining the seat. Well, she has a right to recline her seat. She bought a reclining kind of mm-hmm. seat, number one. Number two, so she paid her money. Number two, three, you're not allowed to do that. You're harassing mm-hmm. somebody. So she you're, says you're, that- you're, 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 you're actually being unlawful. There are rules against mm-hmm. that. You're, you're physically, essentially mm-hmm. physically harassing her. Whether it's assault or not, it's a different story. But that's definitely mm-hmm. physical harassment. Yeah, you know. So he's a he's a douchebag. I would never do that. I'd be like, "This is my shitty seat. You move back. You 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 know you recline." And I so what? Well, maybe you could ask, "Hey, do you mind? I'm I'm my I have no room. Do you mind not doing that?" Apparently, yeah. he did ask uh, oh, really? a couple moments before he actually it was the part in the flight where they had food out and so he asked oh can you put your seat up so i can eat and she said yes and once the food was taken away she then reclined her seat again and he got really angry and started to punch her seat she said that she called a stewardess over and she kind of rolled her eyes at the woman and offered him a complimentary rum for his (laughs) for his like inconvenience yeah, give him more alcohol he seems <laughs> yeah. like he's, he's a good drinker and once she started to record he Jesus. stopped punching the seat and just started kind of tapping at it the way he is in the uh, video i think that american airlines is wrong in this i think that guy's a bitch and i think she's also a woman mm-hmm. she's yeah. also an older woman or she's a woman she's a woman so she's a smaller brain she doesn't that, know how to <laughs> she's got a smaller brain she doesn't understand <laughs> but she's a woman that, like how about being a gentleman you fucking Bitch, yeah, that's fucked up. He shouldn't, have, he shouldn't have done that. He's a that. bitch. I feel fucked like they're I both guy. they're both kind of like douchey. Both of them. I don't know, man. I think, uh, would you uh, would you recline if, to someone? If a woman does that I to me, I'm gonna be know? like, if she's uh, <laughs> like, I'm gonna be like, she's got a reclinable seat. I just I gotta shit uh, in the, the deal. I yeah. might be mad. I might say something. I'm not gonna hit her. No, seat. that was stupid too. Yeah, because he's so. being a. Bitch. You can't hit it. I would no. fucking. You know what I would do? 
<laughs> I'd slit his fucking throat. <laughs> yeah, and then I'd have to kill everybody on the plane, and it would be on him, because I can't have witnesses. And then I got to delete her phone and find out what her, well, first I got to find out what her passcode is so I can delete it from the cloud. I'd be annoyed that like you're giving him, free, I'm like, you're giving him free rum? He's punching me. I know. <laughs> Why is he getting free alcohol? Of course you were. And rum? What are you, a pirate? <laughs> the fuck asked for rum on a plane? I'd have some rum. <laughs> Matey. Hey. All right, next one. Okay, so a couple days ago, uh, Dwayne Wade went on to Ellen and mm. talked about how his uh, child, Zaya, who was born as a, ma as a male named Zion, came out to him and Gabrielle Union, his wife, saying that he wants to be... Uh, referred to as Zaya and use the pronouns she and her. And Dwayne Wade basically said that it's his job as a parent to basically let his kids be who mm. they want to be. And that's all he really said. A it was, I think, yesterday night, rapper Boosie Badass went online and he made a whole video about saying, if you want your son to be gay, let him be gay. But what if he's 16 one day, falls in love with a girl, don't chop off his dick. Don't cut off well, his Well, first dick. of all, you're not allowed to in this country. That, so there are a lot of misconceptions about if your child is transgender, you legally are not allowed to do these things. You're not allowed to do physically altering. Um, you can't physically alter their biology until they are of consent. Mm. I think mm -hmm. till they're 18. Mm. So, you know, this is not an easy thing for Dwayne Wade and his wife. It's obviously a very sensitive thing. Their child reads social media. So this is really hard for mm -hmm. them and for the kid I always, like, I always, you know, we said some stuff on this podcast. I think it was Brendan was talking, and and I think we have to be, you know, you have to always be really sensitive mm -hmm. to this stuff because these people listen to stuff, you know. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I think it's very hard. It's got to be very hard because they obviously love the shit out of their kid, of course, and mm -hmm. they're protective of their kid. And when people come on and talk about their child, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. it's like, hey, man, I don't give a fuck what your point of view is, and I understand he's probably coming from a good place. But I don't know, man. I, I, well, I, you gotta you gotta also know that you don't you don't really have the right. You're not allowed to do that. To you know the, yeah. the name of the the kid is Zion. I think that Zion Williamson of the Pelicans should get a sex mm -hmm. change and join the WNBA and just fuck everybody <laughs> up like Juana Man style. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think I I'm, I love Dwayne Wade. I'm like a huge fan, and I think he's he actually seems like a progressive great dude. So you know, yeah, good for he him. loves his child. Main thing is just as a parent, I. I I can understand how difficult mm -hmm. all of it is when your child is being talked about. But how many pro about. athletes I'm pissed are, that we talked about it. But how many pro athletes are even coming out and being that, you know, being that supportive of their kid? And there are other athletes who have kids like this. So for Dwayne Wade to be that openly supportive for other I think it helps other kids. So I think sure. it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool that an athlete 100%. of that magnitude is doing 100%. that. 100%. So that's pretty the other cool. Thing. Yeah, I, I'm mad that we even spoke about it. We were being flippant about it. I don't think we weren't being insulting, but flippant. And then, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. We, it's also important to note that um, Dwayne Wade never said anything about like his child going undergoing any type of surgery. No. He's just talking about how the child wanted to be referred to as. And a lot of people also had a lot of backlash with this rapper because he has seven children that he does not take care of. Oh, jeez. Wow. How many? Seven. There you go. What? He's got seven kids. Seven kids that he does not take care of. You stupid motherfucker. <laughs> Shut your mouth, then. <laughs> Shut the your mouth, you to stupid, talk about Dwayne irresponsible child. piece of shit. Fuck you, and fuck anybody who does that. I got no time for that shit. Yeah. You, you are a bitch, too. You don't take care of your seven <laughs> kids. Fuck, what's his name? Um, Boozy, Boozy Badass. badass. <laughs> fuck Boozy Badass. Seven kids, you piece of shit, you don't take care of kids. You're a failure. Fuck you. I don't give a shit what the reason. I don't care if you didn't have a dad. Go fuck yourself. Fatherlessness, huge problem. <laughs> fuck you. Damn. He seems fuck like he you. seems like a tough guy. So this is just Brian fuck, saying fuck this. You. I think he's yeah, seems how about all right. the kids? How about the kids? How do they, how do your kids feel? But father your kids, bitch. Yeah. Take care of your kids, bitch. Anybody sure. who doesn't is a bitch. <laughs> Anybody who doesn't take care of the kids is a piece of shit and part of the problem. I got zero. zero. You know what I would do if I was pre if I had the uh, authority? I would take that motherfucker and I'd be like, guess what, dude? You're paying for all your kids and they're living with you. And if you have a problem, I'll put you in jail forever. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I, I, this, is the, this is the biggest problem facing the United States. Fathers who have a bunch of kids and don't take care of them. It is shitty. The, I have shitty. Huge, and you leave <laughs> it to the mom. Good. You leave it up to the mom. So you got a single mom. Go fuck yourself. I doubt it's all one mom. No. 
It's not. It's it's. He's probably spread it out. Yeah. yeah. No, that's what I mean. He's, I guarantee it's seven different women. One of the first probably. jokes I ever wrote about my biological father was uh, my friend asked, "Is your biological father a good person?" And I said, "If he were, I probably wouldn't refer to him as my biological father." <laughs> <laughs> so true. I had a great dad who raised me, though. I, I lucked out, so you know. Kids need that. You don't. You can't do that. I, yeah. I, is that him? That's Boozy Badass right there. Yep, and Apparently. he is well known for the song "Back That Ass Up," the remix. He's <laughs> older, bro. You're older. If this, or I wait, don't know. no, uh, wait me down. Remix. If this is true, yeah. I might be being unfair because I don't know. You just told me that, so I don't know if that's true. If, yeah. So if, if it is true, then he's. I'm he's sure an he's. Yeah. If 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 it's true, he fuck looks off. sad. You know, he looks like he's crying there. I don't know what's going yeah, on. Maybe he's a good person. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this is a lie and he takes care of his kids. Boozy. If I if I'm if you don't if you do take care of those kids, I'm sorry. If you don't, you're a bitch and fuck you and I hope you die. <laughs> cool. Clear. Yeah, that's and I, I I stand by that. Okay, this is a really quick gross one. A woman shared a clip of herself soaking in her bathtub, and in the bathtub it's filled with water and hot Cheetos. Oh wow, that's gotta hurt. Is this the hot Cheetos girl? Nope, this is someone else. What 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 is the purpose of this? She said she was helping her friend with some sort of uh project uh, cool. and they were filming in a bathtub where sh sh they filled it with hot Cheetos. All right. I don't know what it's for, but a lot of people are very angry about this. She's just doing that, huh? Is that that can't be refreshing? No. It looks gross. Ugh. Also, I don't feel like that's good for also, your lady. Make a bits. better video. I know, it's so quick. So I needed, so needed this after a stressful. Hopefully, day. she's covering her privates. Oh, burn! <laughs> That's my first thought. Like, yeah, it might that might seep inside? <laughs> that can't feel yeah. good. All right, ready for another one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty crazy. This is in the UK, and this woman right here is a violinist uh -huh. in her fifties. And you know, since she's a violinist, she's been playing since she was like ten years old, and she's in she's part of a, an orchestra in the UK. She had a tumor in her brain, and the surgeons woke her up during the surgery to make sure that when they remove the tumor, they're not actually messing with her hands Damn. the way she plays violin. So she was playing violin as they're doing surgery wow. on her. What kind of, oh, let me see. Brain surgery right there. Oh, my God. I don't even know how it's possible that they could do it while they're doing surgery on her brain. To keep her, you know, awake and I don't think there are any nerve endings. I don't know. What do I know? But that was yeah, that was pretty crazy. All I know is boozy badass. And <laughs> I don't know about. All right, if God, boozy I'm badass. fired up. You got me all fired up about the fighting stuff. No, but you're very, very hard on dads that don't care take care I'm, of the kids. I fucking it's happened before. It's not cool. no, I have no time. Yeah, it's, it's not, not cool. Fatherlessness in this country is a huge problem. Yeah. Mm. You know? All right. Next one. Apparently, People have software now that can mimic like your voice or your mom's voice or my voice or whatever, and they'll call you and scam you out of money. So they'll take a little audio sample of your voice and pretend like it's your mom or your dad or whatever at needing you guys to wire the money. Yeah. So it's actually working now. That software is that good. What? Wow. So this is the Better B Business Bureau actually warning the public of it. They say it's for uh, companies now, but it could be also like regular people too. You get those IRS scam calls with it all the time. I, I, got, oh I, got, all the, yeah. I got one recently with the guys like, it's just how fucking annoying they are. The guy goes, he goes, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> that's a, like that's how the real fucking government talks. <laughs> oh shit. I call the, I call the, I call the numbers. Do you, you get, call him back? Yep. And I always get this Indian guy on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sir, just can you hold on please? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah. And then I finally got, this one uh, law firm told me they had some tax thing that they wanted, me, like, you know, and I was like, so let me guess, so you guys want to do my tax? And they, they were telling me I, I might be in violation of something. And it was just a scam. And the girl did kind of like, she was working for them. And I go, dude, so why, why are you doing this? It's such a fucking scam. What'd she say? And she goes, well, I, I understand. Wow. Yeah, because so she, she was knows. working for these assholes. Well, dude, it's like, con you know, one of the cons they pull now is they ask you to go to the drugstore and get like Google Play gift cards or, or like uh, Baskin Robbins gift cards and you buy them and you read off the back of the code because that way there's no paper trail. Yeah. I, I, They're fucking, you, you, if you think that's the government at that point, you're a fucking idiot. Correct. You probably deserve it. It's I usually mean, like old, old people, that, right? Yeah, that's that what sucks. Maybe the Nigerians were doing amazing, uh, amazing uh, scams though. They had offices, they had actual cash that was that was um, counterfeit. I mean, they, they would do all kinds yeah. of shit. 
they would do um they even had like bills that would look so real and then they would turn blue or something it was like a <laughs> type of dye i mean this guy jumped out a window because he lost all his money i know it's he so sad put him two million dollars into this project but they were like Shit. they looked so legit i heard that they're even like uh delivering or sending checks to celebrities like big checks for thousands of dollars and you can cash in it's actually real but then once you cash it they have like control over it somehow your bank of account your money, something yeah, yeah. Your bank account, yeah no what they do is that i love I, I had a guy on for the longest time and he he said sir uh you've won this um sweepstakes but you have to pay the taxes on it mm. and the minute you pay the taxes we are authorized to release the check <laughs> so i'm like okay okay this is amazing okay so what where do i send the money how much is that he said i send like twenty three hundred dollars and i go okay uh where and it was in jamaica <laughs> <laughs> so i go where okay i go okay i'm, I'm gonna send it and i go okay i sent it and he goes where is it? i go i don't know i sent the money I, what, what wait hold on it's saying now it's back no it didn't go well what where what do you give me the i had the guy running all over jamaica <laughs> and finally at the end of it i was like it's not there he goes no he was, i kept them on for like a whole day and i go i go um i go well then, well then, can you have, have you checked your ass? I said something like that. Why don't you check your butt or whatever? <laughs> Bumble <Bumbacross>, crawl, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so All right, here's the next one. Jeff Bezos is donating ten billion dollars. Like he's starting some sort of company ten? to help the environment, climate change. Wow, he's awesome. But there's critics of him from Amazon, their own employees that stayed anonymous, saying like he's already like wooing other companies, like oil companies, which are causing climate change right or you know negative yeah. it's impossible change. not to be amazon and not cause climate change i know he the fuck that the guy don't is they like not something. pay federal taxes i mean I amazon, yeah, they, get they, go somewhere else. they get away with some crazy shit mm -hmm. um he's he's a badass though <laughs> i like i thought I it was like kind of badass the way he handled the dick pic situation oh, you know yeah. where he was like yeah put it out i'll fuck it he like that was his whole thing i was like all right I guess yeah. he's got a decent piece. Well, not only that, <laughs> put it out and I'll sue you. Yeah. Good luck keeping up with Jeff Bezos. Yeah. He's not, he didn't become Jeff Bezos because he's a pussy. <laughs> Fuck off. That yeah. dude's a beast. He, uh, I think he's, I, I know a guy who knows him well and says that he's very fucking special and does want to make the world a better place. Really? Yeah. He said he might I had be, a cousin who he said he might be the savior. Him. Yeah. What'd they say? Your cousin? She said he's really cool. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, but the, I know a guy who wrote a book who's writing, who's written two books on really on Silicon Valley. Um, the fuck's his name? Um, who is the one who is the woman who is called crazy? the cult of the amateur? Bring it up. It's cult, called, cult of the amateur. Yeah, uh, the cult of the amateur. And it's about how YouTube, like everybody, can just be in it on anything. And yeah, uh, Andrew Keen. Yeah, Andrew Keen said he Bezos might be the one guy because he knows all those guys. Who is the woman though who ripped the blood company who ripped everyone off? Then the oh, 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 that's such a great, Theranos, yeah, right? That's such a great. That book was hilarious. Such a great fucking documentary. Yeah. What was her name again? It's from Theranos. I know that. Um, Thor yeah, Theranos. Yes. Um, Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah, there you uh, go. Dude. With her fake voice, with her gross, deep voice, and it was Scary all voice. phony. It was all phony. But if you just dress the part, you can get that far. If you're confident and you just dress the part, holy shit! Yeah, yeah. look at that face. She yeah. looked attractive, but then not attractive, but then attractive. Well, she I couldn't put tell. on a lot of weight in her face, I guess. Yeah, I don't. She was attractive. I don't want to disparage her looks, but no. she's just, I mean that's that might be Photoshop. <laughs> but she was a strange, strange one. Yeah. Just a real, like, just kind of full of shit. Yeah. But her family, uh, you know, she comes from D.C. and uh, I, I have we have friends that know her family, and you know they're trying to help her and stuff. But it's like, come on, man, come on. So weird to be like, we're so proud of you. You made this company, and then like, oh, you ripped off everybody. Everyone. You're a fucking well, horrible I think person. She may have been somebody who was just trying to fake it till she made it. So she really believed she was going to pull out of this right just, you know, probably she she was just out she was trying to be steve jobs she was dressed like him she wore the same thing every day she had she had this whole image of herself and it just didn't work she's too young she just it wasn't didn't have the goods look at her now look at her there in that picture where she's in the deposition yeah Don't it doesn't worry. look good wow it's not a good time not a good time that's usually her. not your best photo though the deposition <laughs> no no not doing well there you want to do another one? Yeah. One more? Two more? All right. Got, so, do you guys follow NASCAR at all? I don't. All right. Well, there was this crazy crash that happened 
Oh no. And then uh, I'll show you what happened here. See, they lock, lock bumpers. Oh, fuck. Oh, my went, God. Look at that. Oh, my God. When the air God. flipped, got hit by another car, and then sliding on the roof, and there's fire, obviously. That is horrible. Yeah. yeah. That's horrible. They said this is the closest thing to when Dale Earnhardt crashed and died. Did the guy die? No. So he, after this crash, he was in serious condition. Picking it up. And this was on the, what, 17th? It's incredible that, this, that people can survive this. Yeah. What technology? That's a Jesus role Christ. It was because of the Dale Earnhardt crash, they developed technologies to actually save this guy. Oh, yeah. Um, now, is he going to be all right? Yeah, so he was in serious condition. His name is Ryan Newman. And then look at him here. He was walking home with his daughters already, too. Wow, oh, what a Holy badass. Shit. Oh, my God. What a Good fucking him, badass. Man. Are you kidding me? He has no shoes on for some reason, but yeah. Well, he's probably a little banged up, right? Definitely a little banged he's up. He's definitely sore. Yeah, they don't they don't show that he's holding a, a cup of gin right there before he drives him. <laughs> that's impressive. That's him at the yeah, hospital. That's amazing, Jesus. What a bad motherfucker. Good for him. That yeah. is okay, especially with those two beautiful little daughters. Yeah. What a fucking tough guy. That's I'll crazy. tell you what, man. <laughs> back on the old track, you know what I mean? <laughs> back on the I, old I track. I have a, a barely a driver's license, so I can't really... <laughs> Well, we're going to fight after this, but I'm going to fix your back first. <laughs> I hope so. Whoa. This is the last one. What the Steven fuck? Spielberg's daughter has come out as a porn star. And I believe it's his like adopted daughter. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that, She's black. <laughs> is that, is that coming not, out she now? She oh, look, I using, thought she was Jewish. <laughs> are we using that progressive a term with everything now? Is it come out as trans? I've come I've out come as, out as, as a, 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 a person who sucks no, dick on camera. No, she's completely fucked up, so she's a porn star now. <laughs> yeah. And apparently it's not like her hitting bottom. This is her choice. Yeah. That's what she's saying. Uh, do you think, I don't, do you think it's possible to be, I mean, I'm sure there's some happy porn stars, but no, you know. There, no. I, you don't I, think so? Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, an extreme way to live and it's, it's, I don't know. I don't think it's good. I mean, just my opinion, I, I like, I, I, I think we're damaged in our own way as comics too, but I just think that like, fuck, I wouldn't want my, my kid well, to do if I had a kid, you know? Well, I've tried to figure out what's... I watch it, so I don't want to be a hypocrite. I actually don't watch it anymore at all. Yeah. But I have watched it in the past. How long have you, how long are you off porn? Years, years. What? Yeah. Good for you. But it's not because I'm... I just doesn't turn me on because yeah. I, I look at it differently. I, I, I don't know. I just... It doesn't... I, I literally don't get off on it. Something mm. happened. It's like uh, you know that click that you know. But I don't judge anybody for doing it because I have watched plenty. Yeah. But I um, I think it's a, you're going to pay a price like you do for everything. But there's something. There's something. Uh, I don't. I would imagine it probably doesn't work out for most people, right? And why? Maybe that's a better question. Why? I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't know. You mean you had also care on she had, she had like a good life and everything was perfect for her. Well, I don't like to. I don't like. Uh, it serves a really. Uh, it's a multi billion dollar industry for mm -hmm. a reason. Everybody watches. Everybody it. does. Yeah. So to say that it's, you know, it, I, I don't know. <laughs> I eat burgers. I wouldn't want my kid to slaughter cows. Maybe it's like <laughs> you know? if you're a boxer, it's a skill set. And you become really good, but you're going to have brain damage, right? Right. And if you're a porn star, I don't know if it's a skill set. It just requires a, a mindset, not a skill set. It requires to, you to have a certain biology and then just to be willing to fuck. If you saw me I, fuck on camera, you'd think it was a skill set because it's the, I can't do it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but that, that might be true, like where yeah. you're into it. But I think we all are wary of something that seems like they're using their own body. Right in a way that would usually in most circumstances and societies and in history be considered unnatural. T even though sex is unnatural, we all know, even they know, that in, for one reason or another, when you're getting paid, you're, it's being put on camera. Something that's almost always very intimate is now being put on display. That's extreme. For whatever reason, that would be considered a different and extreme way of living. And even though we all watch it, somehow we all have a deep judgment about it, including them. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've talked to enough porn stars about that, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, I don't, but I, I, I don't like. I feel like a hypocrite if I say anything bad about it. Because yeah. If, so if, if you watch it, don't say that. You know, if you watch it, you're part of it. Right. You're all. We're all part of it. Yeah. All of us are. Yeah. So maybe they're the ones who are at least open and honest about it. That's a good point. Yeah. But I still, I still think that there's something that 
there's some the way we talk about i love football too but like there's something harmful yeah. about it yeah so. but football's also different yeah football's a skill set football you make a lot of money football you have a life afterwards there's something self-destructive maybe about about it we, we all know that ultimately it's just not going to be it's probably not going to work out in a Porn. way and it, in a, some ways like we talk about like it, it's kind of like it's hard to if, if you're young and you do porn it's hard to segue that into another career that's what i mean yeah it, it, but but it, it does serve a purpose we all yeah. watch it yeah it's like i never would i've known women who who had sex for money who, who went to a phase where they were doing that i fucking would never judge them yeah because oh what so you found some really rich dude who's willing to pay you a thousand three thousand bucks to have sex with you and you were either attracted to him or you weren't but you at the time had to pay your rent hey, look man I never been there. I don't know what the fuck, but I, that's as old as time. And they're serving a purpose, and and for both parties. So I, I you know, comedy and porno is the, it's like the two oldest games. It is, man. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it is. I've always felt weirdly protective over the porn people that I've known. Like because I always want to be the one who's not going to nice. try to fuck them. They're usually nice people. Oh yeah, man. I well, like I knew Alana Evans. Yeah. And I I fucking love her. I, I, I think I did a podcast with her. Alana Evans was a badass, old school porn star. Yeah. But I fucking loved everything about Alana. I still love her. I think she's just a, I love her. Oh, I remember her. She's a fucking, I, I have <laughs> nothing bad to say. <laughs> I love didn't her. expect that to It's happen. so weird. Like I follow a couple yeah. porn stars just because I, I met them before and they were nice. So I just follow a couple of them on Twitter and stuff. And it's mm. so weird to be scrolling. Everyone else I follow on Twitter is a comic. So it's so weird to just be, because they'll just post porn. So I'll be yeah. in the grocery store like joke, joke. Oh, someone taking two cocks at the same time. That's it's weird yeah. to see outdoors. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> right. I'm usually home and prepared for, for seeing this. Uh -huh. So. It is. There is something jarring about it, but I I also have, feel the same way. Where like they they also seem to weirdly understand comedy in a way. Like they understand us in a way because I think they like people that are also kind of on their own and loners and kind of almost like freelance type professionals and yeah. kind of bear themselves in a, in another way. So I do feel a weird kinship with them as, at the same yeah. time. I think Alana Evans. Like I I actually got to know her. I I would like periodically just call and say hi and. She's just a, I like everything about her. And uh, I don't know. I, 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 she was in a relationship. She had kids and shit. So I don't know. You know, I mean, yeah. she went through her thing. But she was as normal as anybody I've ever fucking met and still is. Like yeah. I, and, you know, I feel the same way about Asa Akira. I feel the same way about, um, I, I knew Kehlani Lay a little bit for a while. She was gorgeous, another old school girl. She was like, just, you'd fall in love with her. I mean, you know, did these, did they, so, I don't know. Hey, Nicole Aniston dates my buddy Stevie. And I've never, you know, I've spent enough time with them where, where she's gorgeous, but she, you don't get any sexual vibe from her. She's doing her thing and she's in this relationship. So she seems very cool to me. So I don't know, man. Yeah. They're, they're I, I guess I just, I guess, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to judge it. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. That's fair. Everybody watches it all over the fucking world. Yeah. Yeah. So what's up? Maybe it maybe it's us. Maybe the fact that we have a judgment about it. Maybe that's what keeps them out in the outskirts and as outlaws. Maybe that's what it is. Porn is know. porn is weirdly accepting and I've always said that you know they're, they're more progressive in in terms where like they don't call women fat, they call them BBWs. They don't call them old, they call them mature, you know? It's like weirdly accepting you know yeah you're not getting jizz on your face you're getting a facial so <laughs> you know yeah the way you did the terminology yeah it is it is kind of like i don't know it is you could say they don't like themselves but then again you and i don't like ourselves yeah as, as i said there is a weird you do feel a weird connection they they seem to the ones i've met have been very nice so tara patrick yeah spent time another one like it's astonishing how normal they are and actually some of them are completely fucking crazy like in any business i'll take you to the comic store i'll show you some crazy comics really <laughs> all right <laughs> believe it or not yeah either way you and i are gonna make a porn we're gonna fix your back <laughs> yeah and dude then i'm gonna slip your throat <laughs> right it's but you're gonna slip my throat all over your face so it's gonna be like the end of a it'll porn be, it'll be a yeah. it'll blood facial 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was Sam Morell. What, what is your special called? It's called I Got This. Uh, it's available on my website, samorell.com, or on uh, standup.com slash samorell. If, if you go to my Instagram, it's, the link is in the bio, Sam Morell. And, uh, and, I, and I got a basketball. How do you spell Morell? M-O-R-R-I-L. And I got a basketball podcast too because I, I I'm obsessed called Pod Don't Lie with my with my buddy Stavro. So <laughs> Pod Don't Lie, Pod Don't it's lie. ton it's a ton of fun. Sounds like a dynamic name. Oh, it's could be about something like basketball. <laughs> you know, it's cool. Well, there's an expression that Rashid Wallace kind of started called Ball, Ball Don't, Don't lie. lie. Oh, okay. Where he kind of talked. He basically he led the league in technical fouls every year for just talking shit to the refs. So basically, he uh, he got called for a foul that he didn't think was a foul, and then the guy shot the free throw and missed it, and he yelled at the ref, "Ball Don't Lie." So I just love that. I love That's that expression. Great. Hey, Brennan Shaw's going to be in Vancouver uh, on Friday. What is that? That's uh, Friday, February 20th. It's just for Laughs Festival. Oh, okay, good. Go see go see my boy, Brennan Shaw. I'm sorry he couldn't make it. That was my fault because I basically, uh, you know, I had, I've been shooting. So I did Sorry. Vancouver on Sunday. That city's amazing. Yeah. It is really incredible. It's fucking great. And you're in Omaha, Brian? I'm in Omaha. These shows are almost sold out. Uh, so I got Friday and Saturday, the 28th and 29th. The Saturday shows are already sold out. Uh, I think there's one. I think there are some tickets left. I just saw my ticket counts, but get the tickets. There's still stuff left for. Here they are. Hurry up and get your tickets. There's stuff for fucking Friday and um, yeah. So yeah, there's still there's still tickets for the late show Friday, and the I think Saturday's sold out already. And there's some tickets for the first show on Friday, so get your tickets. Sorry about selling out. I'm just super talented. <laughs> I'm not yeah. sold out, so if you want to come to uh, <laughs> the Comedy Castle in Royal Oak, March 5th through uh, 7th, or Gotham, the 19th through 21st, please come. There Chris Mazzilli's Club. Oh, and uh, I'm going to be at Cobb's this not coming Tuesday, February 25th, for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Awesome. Nice. So come and fucking support. I'm not making any money, but I'm doing it. SF rules, man. Yeah, it's you awesome. Ever, you ever go to Swan Oyster Depot, the seafood spot in SF? No. Dude, it was Bourdain's favorite place. He went really? to every time. It's the best. It's I'm called Swan the Oyster guy, Depot. The guy who runs it looks like a SF Colin Quinn. Really? He's like the nicest guy. It's I'm telling you, it's like the best place right. ever. I'll go there. It's incredible. I'll go there. Swan Oyster Depot. I love it there. Um... Yeah, I know where that fucking place is. It's the best. I've seen that place. Something about a lot of people being around oysters makes me kind of grosses me out. It's so good though. I'm <laughs> telling you, that's about <laughs> rules. <laughs> All right, Sam Morell, thanks for thanks for having me, us, dude. Kids. This was fun talking to you. Yeah, man, I love you. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is the fighter and the kid. We're out. <laughs>